Hello, my friends. D.L. Anderson here. Welcome back to Transformation by Truth podcast as we share the truth concerning these last days and what you must do to save yourself from the violent times that are just ahead. Today's podcast is a word of truth accounting of the end times. The end is coming. The end is near. Today's podcast is entitled End Times 199, a summary of the end times, level one, part one. The podcast objectives are provide a summary of podcasts 9 through 24 in this end time series and provide a formal conclusion to the 100 level courses in this end time series. End times series, level one summary continued. This lesson contains timelines and other visuals. Therefore, if you are listening to the podcast, I advise you to watch the video version on our website or YouTube or request a PDF of the lesson so you can add the visual effect. Podcast 9, End Times 130, A Call to Stay the Course. Now, the key takeaways from Podcast 9 are, 1. You must pass every test in every season to obtain the seal of Elohim. 2. The purpose of these last days is to prepare the earth for the reign of Yahushua Messiah. And 3. By saving yourself from this untoward generation, you will lose many of your family and your friends. For the first takeaway, every season is highlighted by a series of tests, and you must pass each test to A, obtain the seal of Elohim, and B, continue into the ensuing season. This progression speaks to the spiritual model of appointed times. By definition, appointed times are the intervals in time in which we present ourselves to the Father to be evaluated by the spiritual standard he has established to determine if we have met his standard and accomplished his will, both of which have been revealed to us. This is where tests come in. To it, the Father allows us to go through various tests and trials to prepare us for an evaluation that will take place at the appointed time. Here is why this is so critical. Failure to pass these tests within the appointed time is the primary reason why so many will be lost for there is a schedule associated with every test and every trial in every season. Now, there are many reasons why the masses will fail to pass these tests. For example, distractions. However, the more critical deficit is the fact that they do not understand the purpose of these last days. For purpose, is the first requirement for understanding end times. This speaks to the second takeaway, namely, the purpose of these last days is to prepare the earth for the reign of Yahushua Messiah. This includes the inhabitants as well as the physical earth and the atmosphere. As pertains to the inhabitants, the Father will eliminate all who live their lives in contradiction to his global vision of righteousness. And it is inevitable that some of these who will be slain by Yahuwah are those whom we call family and those whom we call friend. For this cause, these last days will be highlighted by a physical separation between families and friends. And this is to be expected, 
For Yahushua Messiah reveals that he did not come to bring peace to the earth. He came to bring a sword. Matthew 10, 34 through 37 reveals, Do not think that I have come to bring peace on the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to bring division, a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies are those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. This speaks to the third takeaway, for the enemy will use your family and your so-called friends to hinder you as you seek to be saved in these last days. And yet, if you trust him, he will replace them with spiritual friends and family who will help you along your way. Podcast 10, End Times 140, The Purpose of These Last Days. Now, the key takeaways from Podcast 10 are, one, if you hold on to error, it will prevent you from understanding receiving, and accepting the truth. Two, the reign of Yahushua Messiah will take place on the renewed earth. And three, although the renewed earth is not the new earth where eternity will take place, it is like unto a garden paradise where we will have long life. For the first point, Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 6 is revealing to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heavens, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away. Now, if you are under the restoration, then you already understand how we are in the season of throwing away. Remember, Every fraction of error is an outlet of darkness. And who is that man who follows the master whilst he walks in darkness? This speaks to the importance of enduring sound doctrine, for the masses are not wholly ignorant of the truth. Quite the contrary, the masses don't want the truth. And as truth is an evolution of truth, these individuals will never know the truth concerning these last days. Specifically, they are ignorant to the purpose of these last days and the Father's desire to renew the earth prior to the reign of Yahushua Messiah. Here is why this is so important. The current earth has been severely polluted and defiled. These conditions cannot support the Father's desire for the Millennial Kingdom. Therefore, the earth, like the chosen elect, will experience a glorious restoration, and it will be like unto the Garden of Eden. This miraculous occasion speaks to the second and third takeaways, both of which confirm the need for us to spiritually qualify ourselves to participate in the reign of Yahushua Messiah. For Elohim is removing every stumbling block and all those doing lawlessness to ensure the success of this glorious reign. This is precisely why we will live long lives in those days, the same way the leading race of man lived long lives in the beginning. The only difference is that the physical and spiritual conditions will be even greater in the Millennial Kingdom. Therefore, if you're in search of a fountain of youth, this is the closest thing to it. If you're looking for a way to defeat the aging process, you have surely found it. All you have to do 
is build the ark he has ordained for you to save yourself and your house. For it is a microcosm of the secret place of the Most High. Then and only then will you hear the Father say, when he calls on me, I answer him. I am with him in distress. I show him my salvation. And with long life, I will satisfy. Podcast 11. In Times 142. The Wheat and the Tares. Now, the key takeaways from Podcast 11 are, 1. Men and women who persistently transgress the Father's will are the greatest threats to world peace. 2. We are currently living out the parable of the darnel of the field. And 3. All who continue in sin are offspring of the wicked one. Heard the first takeaway. This is the reason why Elohim will send his messengers to remove all the transgressors from the earth prior to the millennial reign. It is because they are the greatest deterrence to world peace. As I said before, it doesn't take a world of dictators, warmongers, and military coups to take peace from the earth. All it takes is two people who are outside of the Father's will. And conflict is not only brewing, it is about to break forth. Isaiah 13, 9 through 13 reveals, See, the day of Yahuwah is coming, fierce with wrath and heat of displeasure, to lay the earth waste and destroy its sinners from it. And I shall punish the world for its evil and the wrong for their crookedness, and shall put an end to the arrogance of the proud and lay low the pride of the ruthless. I shall make mortal man scarcer than fine gold, and mankind scarcer than the gold of Ophir, and the wrath of Yahuwah of hosts, and in the day of the heat of his displeasure. Now, this speaks to the second takeaway. That is, we are presently living out the parable of the darnel of the field, a.k.a. the wheat and the tares. The darnel, i.e. the tares, are being marked for death. For the harvest is upon us, the harvest is near. And at that time, the darnel will be gathered and burned in the fire. This speaks to the third takeaway, that is, the darnel, i.e. those doing lawlessness, are offspring of the wicked one. They are spiritual seed who have been sown by the devil. He is their father indeed. Listen to me. This is not my word. These are the words of our loving master. Matthew 13 is revealing. And the good seed, these are the sons of the rain, but the darnel are the sons of the wicked one, and the enemy who sold them is the devil. Heretofore, it doesn't matter what you call yourself. You can call yourself what you will. And yet, if you are not doing the desire of the Father, you are the seed of the one who comes to steal to destroy, and to kill. Podcast 12 through 14, end times 144, 146, and 148. Rapture the Harvest, parts 1 through 3. Now, the key takeaways from podcast 12 through 14 are, 1, the rapture theory is a false doctrine that contradicts the spiritual models of purpose, times, and seasons. Two, the harvest is the only scriptural conclusion of these last days. And three, the rapture theory is founded upon multiple misinterpretations of scripture. Per the first takeaway, we know the rapture theory 
is a false doctrine for one simple reason. It contradicts the building blocks of prophecy. To wit, the rapture theory violates the Father's purpose, times, and seasons. As it pertains to purpose, the purpose of the rapture is to meet the son of Adam in the air. Here lies the problem. Namely, the son of Adam is returning during the battle of Armageddon. And the scriptures prove that we, the chosen elect, will still be in the earth. The question of the hour is, what would be the purpose for us to meet the master in the air prior to the battle, only to come back to the earth to witness the battle? The answer, there would be no purpose. And as the father does not operate outside of the spiritual model of purpose, I declare that in line with the scriptures, we aren't going anywhere. This speaks to the second takeaway. That is, the harvest is the only scriptural accounting of the conclusion of these last days. In line with the harvest, it is the chosen elect who inherit the earth, while all who transgress the commands are destroyed. Matthew 13, 30 reveals, let both grow together until the harvest, and at the time of harvest, I shall say to the reapers, first gather the darnel and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my granary. In accordance with the parable of the darnel of the field, we know the harvest is the end of this age, i.e. messianic age. It is the event that marks conclusion of these last days. See Matthew 13, 24 through 30, and Matthew 13, 36 to 43. By definition, the messianic age corresponds to the dispensation in which salvation is established upon belief in Yahushua Messiah, and it is validated by our spiritual assimilation to his image and his likeness. Now, per the timeline below, we see the Messianic age begins with the first coming of Yahushua, and it ends with the second coming at the Battle of Armageddon. During this time, the wheat and the tares are coexisting in the field of the world, and this will continue until the time of the harvest, i.e. the end of these last days. These things being what they are, it is clear the rapture theory has been founded upon multiple misinterpretations of Scripture. This is surely a key takeaway, for there are many verses used to support this theory. And yet, they have all been misinterpreted, and we analyzed several of these in prior podcasts. One of the key misinterpretations is 1 Corinthians 15, 50-53, which we proved has nothing to do with the harvest, i.e. the end of this age. On the rather, this passage speaks to the end of the world. Now, as you can see by the timeline below, the end of the world is 1,000 years after the second coming of the Messiah, i.e. the harvest. Therefore, by displacing this event, those who believe in the rapture have merged two different end times events into one, which is precisely why they are in grave error concerning this theory. In conclusion, I would remind you that the rapture theory is one of the most dangerous end times doctrines in the religious circuit. I caution you to be wary of it and be wary of those who are following it, for it does not end with eternal life. Podcast 15, End Times 150, 
What errors conceal, truth reveals. Now, the key takeaways from this podcast are, one, it is impossible to receive the truth without the right spiritual framework. The only way to defeat the work of any error is to embrace the truth the error was designed to conceal. And the difference between the millennial kingdom and the eternal reign is the truth the rapture theory was designed to conceal. Per the first takeaway, we came to know that the primary reason why many who were called are being led astray by false prophets and doctrines of devils is because they never developed the spiritual framework to receive the truth. This is critical, for if you do not possess the spiritual framework to receive the truth, you will fail to see through every scriptural error and every satanic lie. As it so happens, this is the only way to defeat the work of the enemy and all the errors they have created. This speaks to the second takeaway. To wit, the only way to overcome the error is to embrace the truth the error was designed to conceal. As it pertains to the rapture theory, it most assuredly contradicts multiple facets of truth. However, the most critical contradiction is the timing around the millennial kingdom and the eternal reign. In convoluted order, the rapture theory attempts to merge these two events into one, even though they are 1,000 years apart. This is the third takeaway from this lesson, and a prominent deception you must resist. You will be aided by the timeline I have provided below. Here we see the beginning of the Millennial Kingdom, starting with the second coming of Yahushua Mashiach. And for 1,000 years, we will rule and reign with the Mashiach and the renewed heaven and earth. At the end of the 1,000 years, we have the end of the world and the judgment. And after this time, we have the reign of Elohim, which is forever. And that will take place in the new heaven and the new earth. Podcast 16 through 19, end times 160, 162, 164, and 166. Rapture Truth, One Taken, One Left, Parts 1 through 4. Now, the key takeaways from Podcast 16 through 19 are, 1. We are living in a time of spiritual darkness. 2. The ones who are taken are being carried through the seven seasons in these last days. And three, the seal of Elohim is the sign confirming those who are being taken and all others will surely be left behind. Per the first takeaway, we took a deeper look into the scripture passage which introduces the spiritual model of one being taken and one being left. Luke 17, 34 to 37 reads, I say to you, in this night, there shall be two in one bed. The one shall be taken and the other shall be left. Now, as we discussed aforetime, most Bibles read, in that night, there shall be two in one bed. But alas, that has been misinterpreted and should read as this. And thus we hear our loving master declaring, in this night there shall be two in one bed. From there, we came to see how this night is equated to the great darkness associated with the times of the Gentiles. Accordingly, the one who is taken in this passage is the one who was carried through this time of great darkness. He or she is the one who is being guarded, specifically in these last days. For we know it is the will of Elohim 
to destroy all who are not being set apart. These are those who will be left behind. As the Father carries us through these last days, from one season to the next, these will all die, all of them being faithfully joined to the infamous list known as the slain of Yahuwah. This speaks to the final takeaway, that is, those who are taken possess the seal of Elohim. And thus, the seal is the only thing that can save you. It is your ticket into the millennial kingdom and greater things to come. Podcast 20, End Times 170, No Time to be Raptured. Now, the key takeaways from Podcast 20 are, 1. The seal of Elohim contains two key ingredients, spirit and truth, and you cannot have one without the other. Two, the revelation of the seven seasons in these last days is a baseline of truth we have established via the Spirit. And three, every event associated with these last days must fall into one of these seven seasons. Per the first point, Yahushua Messiah confirms this matter in John 4, 23-24, saying, But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father also does seek such to worship him. Accordingly, those who are sealed are men and women who are full of the Spirit and walking in truth. As it pertains to these last days, the Spirit has opened their eyes to the revelation of the seven seasons, as this is the baseline of truth. On this wise, the easiest way to determine if an end times event will surely occur in these last days is by simply finding the season it would fall into. And if there is no season, then we are dealing with a false doctrine, and we should throw it away. Podcast 21 through 23, end times 180, 182, and 184. Understanding the Word of Prophecy, parts 1 through 3. Now, the key takeaways from these podcasts are, 1. There are seven guidelines for understanding the prophetic word. Two, the first three guidelines are considered the building blocks of prophecy. They are the foundation. The second two are the focus of prophecy, and the final two are the keys of prophecy. For the first takeaway, we have thoroughly analyzed the seven guidelines for understanding the word of prophecy throughout the 100 level courses in this end time series. And here they are. One, you have a purpose, why it will happen. Two, a time, when it will happen. Three, a season, a sign confirming the time. Four, a messenger, one who has been delegated to prophesy what will happen. Five, the sequence, how it will happen, i.e. the order of the events within the prophecy. Six, a people who the prophecy will happen to, and seven, a place where the prophecy will happen. Now, we covered the first three guidelines early in this series, introducing them as the building blocks of prophecy, for they are at the foundation of every prophetic word. They are the fundamental requirements, and thus, if any word does not fulfill these three guidelines, it is not of Elohim. We covered the next two guidelines more recently, i.e. the messenger and the sequence. These two guidelines should be viewed as the focus of prophecy. As it relates to the messenger, he or she is a spiritual delegate 
who has been commissioned to proclaim the word of prophecy. Without this delegate, there could be no dissemination of the prophecy. Romans 10, 13 through 15 reads, For everyone who calls on the name of Yahuwah shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without one proclaiming? And how shall they proclaim if they are not sent? As it has been written, how pleasant are the feet of those who bring the good news of peace, who bring glad tidings of the good things. Now, the primary reason why the messenger is the focus of the prophecy is because he or she has been given the details. Specifically, they understand the sequence, that is, the fifth of the seven guidelines. Now, the sequence is crucial, for complex prophecies are not linear in nature. Therefore, only the messenger is able to decode complex prophecies due to their understanding of the sequence. This is a super feature of holiness evolving from the following point of interest. Every true prophet possesses delimited access to the prophetic wheel. This access is what allows them to understand the complex sequences of prophecy. By definition, the prophetic wheel is the timeless accounting of every event which occurs within the boundaries of time that can only be accessed from the unique and singular perspectives of the divine. And by an individual who has been granted this access, for example, a prophet. Now, the prophetic wheel not only provides knowledge of the sequence of prophecy, it also provides knowledge of the people and the place. These are the six and seven guidelines for understanding the word of prophecy. Now, although they may appear to be the most obvious and or simple, the people and the place are the most critical components of prophecy. And thus, they are the keys of prophecy. For what good would it do us to know every other detail if we don't know who is being addressed. Likewise, what would it profit us to know the first five guidelines if we don't know where the prophecy will occur? Therefore, as you seek to understand prophecy, do not forget that it all comes down to the place and the people. Podcast 24, End Times 190, Navigating the Way of Escape. Now, the key takeaways from Podcast 24 are, one, there is a circular nature associated with understanding prophecy. Two, knowing the path and walking the path are the two parts to every spiritual equation related to surviving these last days. And three, we are not saved because of what we know. We are saved because of what we do. For the first point, the seven guidelines for understanding the word of prophecy build upon each other. Accordingly, when seeking to understand any prophecy, start with determining the purpose and end with determining the place. Now, once you apprehend any prophecy, you must appreciate how obtaining this knowledge is only the first half of this spiritual equation. The second and more critical half is walking in accordance with the knowledge you have obtained. This is perhaps the most important takeaway of all. That is, you will not be saved by your knowledge. You will be saved 
by your execution. You will be saved by doing what you know is right in accordance with the Father's will. Now, James 1, 21 through 25 reads, Therefore, put away all filthiness and overflow of evil, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your lives, and become doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Because if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and immediately forgets what he was like. But he that looked into the perfect Torah, that of freedom, and continues in it, not becoming a hearer that forgets, but a doer of work, this one shall be blessed in his doing of the Torah. Wherefore, my brothers and sisters, I encourage you to be zealous for knowledge and understanding, specifically as it pertains to the end times and these last days. And yet, I encourage you to be even more zealous for wisdom and to become doers of the will of Elohim, beginning with building the ark he has ordained. Remember, something worse than the flood is coming, and all who resist this knowledge and fail to act in accordance with this truth will perish. Here again, my final word of advice is simply, don't let that be you. Now, here is the final word. Now that you have a high-level view of the end times, we must analyze the details. Starting next Monday, July 3rd, that is exactly what we're going to do. We will begin analyzing the detailed view of these last days, specifically the seven seasons we introduced at this level. For your review, the seven seasons in these last days are below. Season one, the restoration of the nation of Israel. Season two, the sealing of the set of part ones. Season three, the sifting of the nation. Season four, the destruction of Mystery Babel. Season five, the day of Yahuwah. Season six, the restoration of the land of Israel. And season seven, the Battle of Armageddon. Now, for the remainder of this year and going into next year, I will use the word of truth to show you exactly what has happened and what will happen in these seven seasons. In the process, those who have been chosen will join me in the ministry Elohim has given me as we navigate the difficult days that are here and the difficult days that are ahead. For that reason, I will only post podcasts once a week for the foreseeable future on Mondays, for I am in the midst of implementing my own Exodus plan. My dear friends, I am in the process of leaving Mystery Babel. And although this is my primary focus, I have not forgotten you. Neither will I leave off from the conditions of my ark. Therefore, I will continue to serve as an end times watchman. I will warn all concerning the great evil that is ahead. And yet soon, that phase of my commission will have ended. And all who did not heed the call, these will soon be dead. Now, here is today's assignment. Meditate on the word you have heard today and ask the Father to reveal the truth to you. Remember, where there is no conviction, there can be no faith. And without faith, 
it is impossible to please him. Next, if the Spirit is leading you and you have not signed up for our mailing list, you can go to www.transformationbytruth.com to sign up today. We'll alert you as soon as podcasts are posted and we'll share our presentations, notes, and other materials at no cost. It is for your edification. And most importantly, you will be connected to me and those who have joined themselves to this ministry as we prophesy and align current events with the prophetic word. These discussions are taking place outside of this podcast ministry. Therefore, if the Spirit is leading you, and only if the Spirit is leading you, I encourage you to come and see. You will be in good spiritual company. Lastly, if you have any questions, please submit them via our contact form on our website. If you have any comments, please share those on the video page for this podcast, also on our website. Now, here is what's next. We completed today's podcast, End Times 199, a summary of the End Times, Level 1, Part 2. And the next podcast is entitled, End Times 200, The Revelation of the Seven Seasons. I will post this podcast on Monday, July 3rd, 2023. Until then, my friends, continue to be led by the Spirit of Elohim. Continue to watch. Continue to pray. Continue in fasting. And most of all, continue to be focused. For the end is coming. The end is near. Music